All right, in this example, we're talking about the difference between an atomic number and a mass number and how we can um, label an element with its symbol and its atomic and mass numbers. So just generally, before we get to the specific example here underneath, um, we have an element symbol, which I've represented here as E. And if you look on the periodic table, we can look, for example, the element symbol of potassium is K. And so this is our, where we would write, this is our element, E for element, this is our element symbol. So that's what goes here. And for example, potassium has an element symbol of K. All right. And you'll see that when we write a symbol, there'll be a number um, above on the left and below on the left. And many times the number on the below left is missing, but that'll become clear why in a moment. Um, what's on top? Uh, A. A is the mass number. Make sure this stays on screen here. So this is my mass number. That's what's symbolized by A. All right. And the mass number, well, it's um, a number that, that, that is related to the, the mass of the atom. Now, we know that most of the mass, um, pretty much all of the mass of an atom, is in the nucleus. What's in the nucleus? Neutrons and protons. So the mass number, it's a number, is just simply equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, okay? So number of P plus number of N, number of protons plus number of neutrons. It doesn't have any units, it's a number. And Z, remember what Z is? Z is my atomic number. And the atomic number is simply equal to the number of protons. So if we don't think too much about it, we might make the mistake that A is the atomic number, A for, for atomic, but that's incorrect. My atomic number is Z, so maybe that's unfortunate, and maybe we might make an error, but, but just remember that A does not stand for atomic number. My A is my mass number, my Z is my atomic number. And sticking with the same example of potassium, potassium, the element symbol is K, and my atomic number is 19. So the, the atomic number, Z, is the number that's always on my periodic table. And so um, just a moment ago I said we often don't write the atomic number if we have the element symbol, and the reason is because we always have a periodic table. So if you know it's K, for example, you know that it's atomic number 19. And vice versa, if you know the atomic number is 19, there's no question that you're talking about potassium. Okay, so let's continue on with an example. So um, an example of a question that on this stuff that you might see um, in a test quiz exam situation, most likely a test or quiz situation, is something like this where we're asked to complete a table. Um, actually, let's keep that in view while we do the first few. That's about good right there. So in this first one, we've got the um, element symbol MN. And if I look on the periodic table, I see that MN is right here, manganese metal. My atomic number is 25. Okay, so manganese is written element symbol AZ. A is my mass number, Z is my atomic number. And so I th saw that it was 25 on the periodic table. Okay, so just because my table is listed in these columns left to right, I don't have to fill them in left to right, I fill them in as they make sense. So my atomic number is 25. I'll write that in. 
my atomic number is the number of protons. So I'll write that in. Okay, and there we go. And my mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons, but it's actually given to me here. So that is 56 in this case. Now, in order to determine my number of neutrons, I take my mass number, which is neutrons plus protons, take away my number of protons, and I'll get my number of neutrons. So in this example, my number of neutrons is simply 56 minus 25. So you don't have to put this in as your answer. I'm just showing everybody where the number comes from. You would write simply uh, 31 because that's the difference. Okay. Now, if there was a column here that said how many electrons are there on the neutral atom, well, um, if it's neutral, the number of protons and electrons are the same. And so I know that there are 25 electrons on a manganese neutral atom. Let's go to the next example. We have cobalt. Now, in this example, I've got my symbol and my mass number, but no atomic number. So it's cobalt. 57. Well, if I know it's cobalt, I uh, will look on my periodic table. You are always given a periodic table on a test uh, or, or quiz if you need it. And um, cobalt is right here. It's a first row transition element. Uh, and I see that the number is 27. Again, that is my atomic number, my Z number. And so my atomic number for cobalt I just found is 27. So my atomic number, why don't I write that in here? Um, a second. My atomic number is my Z, and my mass number is my A. Yeah. So what is the mass number? mass number was actually given, so I can just write that in. The number of protons is the same as my Z, 27. And the number of neutrons, well, if the mass number is the number of neutrons plus protons, but I know there's 27 protons, I'll take the difference, and that's simply 57 minus 27 or just 30. How many electrons are there, by the way, on a neutral cobalt atom? 27. Right? Same as the number of protons. Okay, let's move to the next one. Now, in this case, um, I'm just given this much information. I know that it's Fe, which is iron, and I'm given a mass number of 55. Let's start with the atomic number. It makes sense because if I have Fe, the element symbol, again, I'm going to look. Iron is another first row transition. It's between manganese and cobalt. Uh, here it is right here, number 26. So my atomic number Z is 26. My mass number is 55. That was given. And so... Um, Moving over here, the number of protons is the same as the atomic number, so that's 26. And the number of neutrons is what? It's the mass number minus the number of protons, right? So it's going to be, in this case, 55 minus 26, and that number is 29. So I have 29 neutrons in the iron nucleus, in an iron 55 nucleus. Okay, we're good with that one. And so, in fact, if I wanted to write this completely, it would be iron with my mass number 55 and my atomic number 26. That would be the complete way to write it. All right, next I have, move this up. Next, 
Now I don't know what the symbol is, or the atomic number, or the mass number. I just know there are six protons and eight neutrons. Okay, if you know the number of protons in an element, you know its identity, because the number of protons is equal to the atomic number. And so I know my atomic number is six. When I know the Z or the atomic number, I can go to the periodic table and find out which one is number six. And I can see from this table that number six is carbon. So I will go ahead and write the symbol C. Now the mass number, what contributes to the mass? The nucleus, what's in the nucleus? Protons and neutrons. So I'm going to add these together to get 14, and that's my mass number. Okay, so you've all probably heard of carbon-14. So um, now this is not part of the question, but let's just fill it in. This is how I would write it, carbon-14, with the 14 in the upper left, and the atomic number 6. So you see how the, the 6 and the C having both is a little bit redundant, but it's very important to write the um, mass number. Uh, you've looked at isotopes, you've read about isotopes, you looked at the definition of an isotope, and so we know that we can have carbon-12 or carbon-13 or carbon-14, but in each of those isotopes um, the number of protons would be the same, it's just simply the number of neutrons that's changing. Yeah. Okay, the next example, I've got an atomic number, I have a mass number, so what will you do? Which one would you do first? Probably look up this Z, right? And then we'll have our element symbol. So again, we'll go to the periodic table and we'll look for number 47. Number 47 is silver, AG. So let's uh, take that away. Silver, we'll write it in as AG. And so in fact, this is silver 108 with, um, and the Z of course on silver is 47. So this is the silver 108 isotope, if you like. The number of protons is the same as my Z, which is the same as my atomic number, so I can write that in right away. This is 47. Okay. Um, how many neutrons? Uh, mass number minus P, so 108 minus 47. Again, you don't have to write this. In fact, I prefer that you don't. I'm just showing you where the number comes from, so everyone follows along. Uh, 108 minus 47 is what? 61. So the number of neutrons is 61. Okay, now for the last one, just a little bit of a twist here. If I have a silver 108, but I have a silver ion, what changes? Well, it's still silver, I haven't changed the identity of the metal, so it's still atomic number or Z number 47, so that doesn't change, right? So I could write 47 in here. Um, does the mass number change if I go from an atom of silver to an ion of silver? Well, the mass number is protons plus neutrons, and I haven't changed that. So this is still 108. Um, have the number of protons changed? No, I still have the same number, 47 protons, in the nucleus of a silver ion, 2+, plus, as a silver atom neutral. And the uh, it's the, still the same isotope, silver 108, so I still have 61. So, so what does change? Well, what changes is the number of electrons. So in a neutral silver atom, the number of electrons would have to be the same as the number of protons, which is 47. But if it's a silver 2 plus, um, I still have 47 protons, but I would have two less electrons. Yeah, so the number of electrons on a silver 2 plus would be 45. But none of the information in this table would change.